Hello students, this is Mrs. Yaud, and today we're going to do Chapter 3, Lesson 5, which is about graphing linear equations using the slope-intercept form. Please have your journals open to page 81. Slope is the rate of change between any two points on a graph, and it measures the steepness and the direction of the line. The rise is the up and down, which is also the y numbers, and the run is the left and right, which is also the x numbers. So for example, um, slope is going to be rise over run, which equals the change in the y values over the change in the x values. So the formula is either y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, or if you wanted to flip it around, it doesn't really matter, but you have to be consistent. So you could say y1 minus y2 over x1 minus x2. You just have to make sure that whatever point you start with is the same point that you start with on the denominator uh, for either one. And I'll show you an example down below. The slope-intercept form of a line is y equals mx plus b, and the reason why it's called slope-intercept is because it tells you the slope and the intercept just by looking at the equation. So in this case, the m is your slope, and the b is your y-intercept. A constant function is a horizontal line with zero slope. So one way to write that using our slope-intercept form is y equals 0x plus some number b. And since 0 times anything is 0, we can just take that part out and write it as y equals b, where b is where the line crosses the y-axis. So I would like to practice with you finding slope given two points. So I'm going to do, we're going to do negative 5 comma 10 and 12 comma negative 7. And so these are the two points that we need to find the slope. So your x numbers are the negative 5 and the 12, and your y numbers are the 10 and the negative 7. We're going to solve this in two different ways. So uh, I'm going to set up my slope formula. I always like to put what I call the skeleton of the formula down. It's a fraction with subtraction signs on the top and the bottom. On the top, we're going to put our y numbers. So I can put 10 and negative 7 here. And then on the other side, I'm going to flip it around and put negative 7 and 10. And then on the bottom, we need to put our x's. So since I started with the 10 over here, I have to start with the 5 on the denominator. So that is going to be ne or negative 5. Negative 5, and then the other one has 12 but we're going to flip it around on the other side. So here we started with the 7 here, so that means I need to start with the 12 on the denominator. So we're going to put 12 minus negative 5. So notice that I just flipped them around on both of those. Okay, let's go ahead and solve both of these. So 10 minus a negative 7 changes to 10 plus 7 and negative 5 minus 12 is negative 17. So this is going to be positive 17 over negative 17. You always want to simplify if you can, so we get negative 1 as the slope if we do it that way. Now let's do it the other way. We have negative 7 minus 10, so it's negative 17 on the top. And on the denominator, we have 12 minus a negative 5, so it's plus 5. So that's going to be negative 17 over positive 17 and that also reduces to negative 1. So you'll notice that in both cases we got the same answer. And so that's what I wanted to show you, is that it doesn't really matter which points you start with as long as you are consistent. So here I started with the negative 5 comma 10, and here I started with the 12 comma negative 7. As long as you're consistent in the numerator and denominator, it doesn't really matter which point you start with. On page 82, it talks about what a positive slope looks like. And a positive slope rises up from left to right. Think about if you had a uh, money in a bank. 
this is what you would want to see happen to your money. You would want to see your money grow. A negative slope is when the line falls from left to right. This is what you don't want to happen in a bank, is having your money decrease. A slope of zero is when the line is horizontal. And an undefined slope is when the line is vertical. On page 83, in exercises one through three, they want us to describe the slope of the line and find the slope. So we're going to find the slope first. So if we take a look at number one, we're going to find the slope. Slope um, always goes by the letter m. Remember, because y equals mx plus b, where m is your slope. So m is going to be the y numbers subtracted over the x numbers subtracted. So my y numbers are 4 and negative 4. And remember, it doesn't matter the order that you put them in. But since I started with the numbers on top, I have to be consistent. Now I need to start with the 3 on the denominator. So 3 and 3 on the denominator. And when we simplify this, we get 4 plus 4, which is 8, and 3 minus 3, which is 0. Anytime you have 0 on the bottom, it's going to be undefined. And this definitely looks like an undefined line because it is a vertical line. If you had a zero on the top, then the answer would be zero. So if this ended up being a horizontal line somewhere, you would have zero on the numerator. And so then that answer would be a zero slope. For number two, my y numbers are four and negative four. And my x numbers are three and negative one. So when we simplify that, four, that turns into 4 plus 4, so it's 8 on the top, and 3 plus 1, so it's 4 on the denominator. And we're going to simplify that to 2. So then that means that my slope is 2, and it's a positive slope. Please pause the video and try number 3 on your own, and turn it back on when you're done. For number 3, I got the slope is negative 1, and it is negative. In exercise four and five, the points represented by the table lie on a line. We, we, we need to find the slope of the line. So we're given way more information here than we need. So basically how you do this is you just choose any two points you want. So for example, I'll go ahead and try this one and maybe this one. So that means that I'm going to use two common negative two and four common negative two. So we need to find the slope. So I'm going to write my skeleton of the slope formula, and I'm going to plug in my y numbers on top. So that's negative 2 and another negative 2, and my x numbers on the bottom. So I'm going to do 2 and 4. So this is negative 2 plus 2, which is 0, and 2 minus 4, which is negative 2. Anytime you have 0 on the top, the answer is 0. So this answer is the slope is equal to 0. Okay, on number five, we're just going to choose any two points. I'm going to choose this time. I'm going to go ahead and do this one and this one this time. So that means that we have negative 3, 11 and negative 1, 3. So I'm going to write my formula first. So m is equal to, there's my skeleton, and I'm going to plug in my numbers. So 11 and 3 are my y numbers and negative 3 and negative 1 are my x numbers. And so 11 minus 3 is 8. Negative 3, this is, turns into plus 1. So negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2. And that simplifies to negative 4. So my slope is negative 4. In exercises 6 through 8, we need to find the slope and the y-intercept of the graph of the linear equation. So number six is not written in the right form. This is written in standard form. So if we want to easily find the slope in the y-intercept, the best way we can do that is to solve for y. So I'm going to circle my y here. Uh, that means I need to move over my 6x first. And when I do that, I have 4y. And remember, these two are not like terms, so they need to stay separate. Also, I want to write it in slope-intercept form, so I'm going to put my x part first, and now I need to solve for 4. So if you remember back in Chapter 1, I showed you how to do this. So if you divide by 4 here, you have to, because of the um, 
division distributive property, you have to do it on all the parts on the right-hand side. So when we simplify this, then, then we get y is equal to negative 6 over 4 I can divide by 2, so that's negative 3 halves x. And then we have 24 divided by 4, which is 6. Okay, so now I'm ready to write my answer. My slope is negative 3 over 2, and my y-intercept, b, is 6. All right, let's take a look at number 8. So number 8 is already written in y equals mx plus b, but there is no b. So when there's not a b, uh, it has to be 0. Okay, so that one's a little bit easier to find. My slope is going to be 5 and my y-intercept is zero. I would like for you to do number seven on your own. Turn the video back on when you're done. All right, you should have gotten that the slope is negative three over four and the y-intercept is two. Number nine, a linear function f models a relationship in which the dependent variable decreases six units. For every three units, the independent variable decreases. The value of the function at zero is four. We need to graph the function, find the slope, y-intercept, and x-intercept of the graph. So we're told that the dependent variable decreases six units. Remember, dependent variable is your y. So y is decreasing six units. And for every time the independent variable uh, is going to be going three units down. And remember, independent variable is your x number. So x is decreasing three units. So what this tells me is the slope, okay? So the slope is my y numbers. So y is decreasing by six. So that's gonna be negative six and then my x numbers go on the denominator and that's decreasing by three, so it's going to be minus three on the bottom. So if we simplify this, we get two over one, or just two. So my slope is going to be two. So we're also told here that the value of the function at zero is four. So that means that we know a point on the line of zero comma four. All right, so now we're ready to graph it. So if we graph 0, 4, that's going to be here. And now I'm going to count my slope. So my slope is up 2 over 1. And so that's going to be up 2 over 1. And I, I'm kind of out of room there, so I'm going to go the other direction. And so we're going to go over 1, down 2. And we're going to keep going with this. Uh, slope here. So my slope is going to stay the same all the way down. And now we just need to connect those points. All right, so now we have to find everything that they asked us to find. They asked us to find the slope and the y-intercept and the x-intercept of the graph. So my slope we found earlier, that's 2. My y-intercept is here, and that's at 0, 4. And then my x-intercept is here, and that's going to be at negative 2, 0. And so this is my answer for this line. Okay, that's it for this lesson. Thanks for watching.